All right, for this video, we're going to do a little uh, tutorial or uh, explanation. Um, the Lincoln needs a lower ball joint again. This will be the third set of uh, lower ball joints, and uh, basically, uh, I'm this time replacing them with uh, Moog M O O G ball joints. Uh, Moog has been around forever. I mean, since I was a teenager, I can remember uh, Moog and their high quality uh, parts. Uh, the other thing is that uh, these ball joints, the Moog ball joints, also have a grease fitting. None of the aftermarket nor the originals had a grease fitting, and uh, for some reason, these uh, town cars love to eat lower ball joints. Uh, also, uh, the same chassis uh, is on the uh, Crown Victoria and the um, Grand Marquis of the years before. I think they quit making the uh, the uh, Grand Marquis, but I'm not sure about all that. Um, in either case, Lincolns are not exclusive to having lower ball joints. There are millions and millions of vehicles on the road. Um, ball joints, however, all um, don't go in the same way. Uh, some of them press in, as the case is with this car, and um, some of them bolt in. Um, there are uh, some, as in the old Dodges, that actually screw in. You have to thread them in to the uh, control arm. So um, basically I'm going to go over this job procedure just uh, you know for three reasons. One is a tutorial if somebody wants to tackle this job and uh, <clears throat> you will need a couple specialty tools but you can get these uh, tools uh, for rent or probably borrow them uh, from the uh, auto parts place. I know AutoZone they do loan out tools to people. Uh, and the ball joint press is uh, probably something they're going to have there uh, so you can borrow that. Um, for other vehicles, you know, uh, like the old Dodges, you're going to need a specialty socket. I doubt they'll have them anymore. And if you got something like a Mercedes 126 chassis, they are not going to have that press. Uh, that thing is ungodly expensive and uh, it's a specialty tool for that one uh, chassis model, the 126. Uh, most of the other ones, um, the, the A-frame gets replaced uh, with a ball joint in it, so uh, I don't even know that the later ones are replaceable. Uh, you know, I, I left uh, working on MB in 1999, uh, early 99. So anyway, um, we're going to go through this uh, step by step. And then uh, it's also not only going to be the tutorial, but also uh, anybody that has any questions as to uh, why they're being charged as much as they are uh, by a shop. Um, since the job isn't a small job, this job is going to be, uh, for me, since I don't have the part yet, I'm still waiting on the part, but uh, my left arm is... Uh, I don't know, I got some kind of nerve damage in the elbow and it's very tingly and very, uh, just the elbow, not the arm. I'm not having a heart attack, at least not yet. Anyway, uh, and if I do, then the video won't get finished. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, that, uh, you know, will give information and uh, just out of general interest, some people might just be interested in seeing how it's done. I know I was talking to Felix and he asked me what a ball joint was. So, um, you know, trying to explain this and I'm just going to make this video and like I said, it's going to be over the course of a couple days. Uh, today I'll just take uh, part of it apart and, you know, we'll follow along as I get clean hands and turn the camera back on. So, okay, here we go. So this is what we start with, taking the wheel off, of course. Okay, so now what's got to happen here is we're going to have to take the, the brake caliper off uh, and the brake caliper support bracket. Now I take this off in one piece. What I do is I take a large C-clamp and I just push a little bit on this to get it to release. Not all the way back or anything like that. And then I'm going <coughs> to take a um, rubber 
type bungee cord, well one of those really thick heavy duty ones, and I'm going to hang this so it doesn't hang on the hose. You do not want to hang on the hose because it's going to cause it to break on the bottoms where it puts all the uh, pressure on it. Then uh, you're also going to want to remove the, uh, the ABS wheel sensor and also the uh, anti-sway bar dog bone or link and let me get under here right now uh, let's see if we can see this that's a bad angle um, okay there's the the link for that because we're going to remove the spindle and we're going to remove that from the top and the bottom ball joint now some guys might prefer to just try to put this thing up and hold it out of the way and leave it connected to the top. Uh, I find that getting the tool in there is uh, a pain in the ass if you leave the spindle hooked up and it's only one more uh, you know uh, bolt to take off. So this is where we start and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, the uh, tie rod end I leave that connected because then you can just swing this whole setup out of the way and you'll you'll see how this goes along uh, as it comes uh, with these you know I usually use air guns with everything but you can do this by hand um, taking it apart with an air gun or even an electric gun if you have it and the tools is fine but when you're putting it together again uh, use the proper torque uh, for whatever it is that you're putting together do not put it together with an air gun same thing for your uh, wheel lugs when you're putting the wheel back on so I'm going to get busy here and I'm going to get dirty. I'm going to take this off, hang it up, uh, start uh, loosening the things that I can get to from here and then I'm going to raise the car up and we'll take another picture of it. So here's what I meant by the C-clamp to push the uh, caliper or the pads away from the rotor just a little bit. And it's just a, you know, a, a very loose turn. You don't have to go all the way, just uh, maybe one turn, just enough to push them away. And here is the, uh, the strap that I'll be hanging the caliper on once I get the bracket and assembly off. Make sure you hook this to a piece of frame, uh, not to some wiring or an air conditioning line or anything like that because uh, the, this assembly is quite heavy. So, and you want it secure and out of the way too. Okay, we'll continue on in a little bit. Alright, so now we can see what's going on here. I did move my band around. Uh, it wouldn't hold on to the frame. It kept coming loose in there. I wasn't going to dick around, but this is how you want it. You want this line to be fairly loose. Here's the uh, sway bar link that needs to be loosened. And here's the ABS sensor, the wheel speed sensor. And while you have these out, clean up the ends real good because they, they're magnetic and they pick up a lot of a lot of metal. Let me put that on the white part of the glove. And um, that slows them down. It uh, kind of gives them a bad signal. And, uh, you know, just take a rag, wipe it off, clean it off. Um, you can use a little bit of brake cleaner, but don't get it into the, uh, you know, try not to get it in there, uh, even though these are pretty waterproof. And these just, uh, you know, for the time being, just lay them out of the way uh, somewhere. Like I said, it's magnetic, so it'll hold on to things. So now we've got the rotor off. Uh, the, this has a cap rotor, which means that the uh, hub is independent of the rotor. If, uh, if this were a hubbed rotor, I would have left the rotor on. But um, So now we get to our uh, ball joints themselves. This is the top, the bottom. The bottom is a tapered uh, ball joint. And then the top is a, uh, is a straight shank. And it has a uh, recess in it for this bolt to go through. And that's what holds the top one in place. Now what I'm going to do, and normally if you have a two tapered, a tapered upper and a tapered lower, is loosen the bolts up uh, just until the locking part of it gets above the threads, 
you know, in other words, thread it down by hand if you take it off, and because it won't come undone, and then thread it until you can't thread it by hand anymore. Because if you leave this locked up and you don't get it off all the way, once you've released the taper, that ball joint will spin like crazy. Uh, this one, of course, uh, on this car, you don't have to do that. So uh, I'm going to loosen this one here, and then uh, we're going to take a big hammer, and we're just going to hit down here. Of course, I'm going to turn the wheel because, uh, actually, no, it'll stay here. But um, you want to hit that with a big sledgehammer, and the spring will cause it to pop off. Uh, I wish I had a way to... Uh, to set up a tripod here to show you how that works, but uh, like I said, as you can see, this bolt here will be loose up to there, and then a good smack here. You don't need a pickle fork. Uh, you know, yeah, if you want to use one, fine, but uh, I don't. Um, you know, usually if you just hit the side of it, the, the spring tension and the taper will take it right off. Okay, so I did re release the tie rod end. Um, all this is going to take is a uh, another cotter, uh, cotter pin for the castle nut, and uh, that way I can get the whole spin a lot of the way. Now this is what I was talking about: was loosening the nut until it's you know all the way up, tightening it, and until it's like hand tight there, where you start to feel that it's the lock is starting to hit that. Now, let me see if I can do this, which is kind of stupid because uh, what you want to do is you want to hit this right here. A couple, whoops, there go the brake pads. And it has been in there a long time. Okay, hang tight, I gotta shut this off. <laughs> okay, that was a double hander three wax with two hands and uh, I guess I'm getting weak now you can see I think if I can see the picture um, 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 where is it right yeah okay so you've seen how how it's now released the spring has popped it off you know just by hitting the side of this not the top or anything else so now uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this top top nut uh, off of there, leave that together, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a jack stand up under here until this starts to come up. In other words, to where it relieves the pressure. And then I can take the spindle out, the complete spindle out, and um, use the tool, and we'll get into the tool when I get to it. But uh, then we can do that, but I'm not going to release this and put it on the jack stand yet um, Because I don't have the part yet. So from here on in it's fairly easy, but uh, It's going to be a lot of pressure on this jack stand so uh, you know if uh, If the shock should break or this arm should come down with a shock breaking don't don't ever rely on the shock to hold this spring in there if uh, if that shock lets go, and shocks are known to, you know, break, and they're they're cheap, cheaply made. Shocks are cheap, man. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> you know, if, if that A-frame swings out of the way, and that spring comes <laughs> comes out, it, it'll do some serious damage or kill you. So, uh, all right, I guess now we got to wait a couple days for parts, which is fine with me. Um... And then we'll continue on. I'm going to check uh, a few more of the front end components. I know just turning this freewheeling without the uh, tie rod on it, this uh, boot is completely ripped and has been ripped for quite a few years. So uh, the, other, the other side is the Moog that I've already done, and that has the grease fitting there, which as you can see, this one does not. And, uh, you know, it... Uh, I think I did this one about six years ago, and it hasn't given me an ounce of trouble. I should have done them both at the same time, but uh, that was a bad bad time in my life, and uh, I was using the car, my wife was at the nursing home, I was running around like crazy trying to do things, and 
I just didn't have the time to do both of them. Normally it's a good idea if you're going to do ball joints to do uh, both of the bottom ones while you have the tools out and the, you know if you had to borrow a tool and uh, you know if you want check the top ones they're easy enough to check once you get it loose and uh, actually right now it should be pretty loose so yep it turns freely I don't hear any moaning or groaning uh, when I get it all loose I'm going to check it for looseness up top if I have to replace them then I will but um, usually if you do the top ones the the car will need a, an alignment again right now as it stands the car is not going to need an alignment I'm not changing anything on uh, any of the adjustments so uh, that's it for the day all right <coughs> all right uh, we're going to get back into the ball joint today and uh, wanted to mention a few things number one you do not need a lift like I have to do this job or this type of jack stand. Yeah, it would help, but people don't generally have this kind of stuff. Uh, if you're going to do this yourself, um, you need a couple of uh, good jack stands, the kind that you know you put under the frame, raise the front of the car up enough, and then you're going to want to do this on concrete or asphalt. Uh, lower the car onto the jack stands, take your floor jack, and hopefully you have a good one. Don't use one of those cheap, cheap, cheap little ones. They're not going to put up with this type of pressure and tension. Uh, so a, a medium good one will do fine. And what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing that I'm doing with a screw jack. You're going to get under here with the floor jack, and you're going to pump this up until you see that this is releasing, letting go, being uh, loose so that you can do it. And then go ahead and do that. Now remember the tool uh, is going to be probably down to about here. So you're going to need that much room between the ground to get a wrench and the tool in there to press the ball joint in and out. Uh, keep that in mind when you're jacking the car up if you have to. Uh, you know, get get it up as high as possible, put some uh, blocks, not concrete blocks, but uh, pavers maybe, or uh, uh, big chunks of wood, anything to get the height that you're going to need. Uh, be careful when doing this. Uh, you know, uh, this if you don't have a floor jacks and you don't have a way of getting the car up, uh, and the jack stands, don't even bother doing this job. You don't know what you're doing, okay? You don't have the equipment, you don't have the tools. This is not a job to take lightly. It can do a lot of bodily injury. So anyway, uh, the ball joint came in last night. This is uh, the move that I was talking about. And as you can see, uh, it has a Zerk fitting. Well, it screws in. Uh, you don't want the Zerk fitting in here uh, while you're pressing it. And then uh, the rubber boot and the nut and everything else that come with it. Uh, this one has a castle nut with a cotter pin and the Zerk fitting that comes in it. So I got these on eBay. If you buy them at the uh, local auto parts store, you're going to be paying about $90 for this ball joint uh, on eBay. You can get them out of California. I think most of them coming out of California for about $32 to $40. So uh, it, it helps to wait a little bit or order them ahead of time before you start the job. Uh, you always, you know, want to have that done, uh, especially if you rely on the vehicle, which I don't. So uh, I'm going to get to jacking this up. Uh, I've got to uh, get a few things ready and we'll continue on with the video as to what the next uh, step is going to be and I'll get the tool out uh, for pressing. <coughs> okay, now that we got our spindle out, and uh, by the way, this spindle, if uh, You'll realize I bent the uh, 
I bent the dust backing plate instead of trying to take all the uh, screws out from behind which are going to be stuck and they're going to round out because these uh, these threads are riveted in and they're just going to round out so I just bend it back a little bit and to get it out of the way so now that we have the ball joint in a good good place that we can work on it what you want to do is you want to clean the area and uh, I wish I had a better angle uh, but the camera is definitely going to get in the way of my work and I'm more concerned about the work than I am making a video um, so anyway there's the old ball joint I can't, oh Jesus I can hardly move it and that's no good the top one that's in good shape so uh, good time to test it anyway let me get this tool set up and you'll see that uh, well, this is a uh, kit. Uh, let me take the camera over here. Um, this is a uh, ball joint and U-joint kit. And uh, mine is a Mac Tools, which, you know, more professional quality. But I do think they sell these at Home, uh, not Home Depot, Harbor Freight. Which, um, well, they have to be strong enough to do the job. So even though those are of a cheaper quality, um, you know, I don't think you can use an air gun with the ones you buy from Harbor Freight. You'll have to do everything by hand, which half of the job you have to do by hand anyway, the other half you do by air gun. And, um, like I said, you could probably rent this tool, <coughs> excuse me, from, uh, from one of the auto parts stores, especially if you buy the ball joint there. And they ought to give it to you for the day for no charge, but, uh, you know, however, you're going to need this tool. I mean, there is a way <coughs> to do this that uh, I have done it back, way back when, before, uh, you know, when I was a teenager. And what we d would do is we would take a, a sledgehammer, we would support this with a floor jack or a, a jack stand, and then as far out as possible, take a sledgehammer and drive it out. Then, to put the new ball joint in, you set the ball joint on the floor jack, okay, you get it square, you got to start it square, don't, you know, if it goes in crooked, you're kind of fucked. Uh, and what you do is you start pushing up as much as you can with the floor jack and the ball joint on it, and almost raise the car up, and then you take a hammer and you start tapping on this and the ball joint will move up with the pressure from the floor jack. Uh, you might have to put a socket or something on the floor jack to get up into the recess underneath the uh, goddamn tripods in the way, underneath this thing uh, to get it up in there all the way but you can tap it down with the weight of the car pushing down on it on the A-frame and the uh, floor jack pushing up on it. Now, that's the way to do it without the tool, and it's not a real great way because you're beating the shit out of everything around here. And if, like I said, if you don't get it started straight, you're gonna, you're gonna wallow this hole out, and you're gonna ruin your lower A-frame, and that's gonna be a problem to uh, replace. So, all right, let me get this set back up again. Uh, let's see, where are we going here? We can get right about there and okay get that set up all right let me get the tool set up on it all right the tool is set up and now you see what I mean by needing the room for the tool so that the car is up high enough um, I'm gonna use an air gun on this and uh, like I said, you can do it by hand. It'll just take a little bit more uh, muscle and uh, it'll take a little bit more time. Uh, driving them in, I don't like to use the air gun uh, because that way I can feel if it's getting cocked at an angle 
and straighten that out. But taking them out is just a matter of, you know, removing it. So. And there it is. Okay. So. <coughs> that's one old ball joint out. Of course, you're going to have to get everything out of there, which is a uh, wobbly mess. And as you can see, this ball joint is complete rust in there. I've taken the boot off. Yeah, you, I forgot to mention, you, you want to take the boot off when you're pressing it out. That way you're not pushing against the rubber. So uh, the, uh, the boot was already torn and let water in there. Of course, no grease fitting, so there it is. Uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, to put the new ball joint in. I'm going to clean this up in here, and I'm going to put a light coating of oil inside there. I'm going to take a wire brush and just uh, get a little bit of that uh, rust and uh, corrosion out of there so that the new ball joint goes in very straight, and uh, we'll get back to it at that point. Alright, just to be clear by what I meant, is I'm going to be taking this uh, die grinder with a uh, little wire wheel, a brass wire wheel, but you can also take a, one of those toothbrush uh, wire toothbrush things and clean up in there. So we're not going to take a, a lot out, we're just going to go in there, get it a little shiny. And that's it. That's all you want to do. Just get it to where that corrosion is gone. And then what you want to do, take just any old motor oil uh, and put a drop on your finger. Whoops. <laughs> and just coat that in there. And then also take the ball joint itself. Oh, come here, you. Ah, jeez, everything's slippery with these gloves. And you're going to want to just coat the ball joint with a very light coating of oil. Okay? And it'll go up in there like that. So let me set up the tool <laughs> and uh, we'll get that put in there. Alright, I'm forgetting to mention a lot of things here that I take for granted. Uh, before you put the ball joint in, make sure that it's straight, you know, the ball joint itself so the tool can fit properly over it. And to get it started squarely, go ahead and tap it in just enough until all sides don't move anymore. And you can eyeball it and you can see that the plane is straight that way straight that way, straight that way, everything looks good there. And then we go to setting up our tool to uh, go ahead and press that in. So we're using the same uh, collars. Uh, you have the big one for the top so that the uh, ball joint can go through it. You want to take a look in there and make sure that you're not on top of anything and then center it and put that on there. Put your tool over it. Make sure it's in the groove. Okay, your bottom one is going to set and this is a set for the tool and what you're going to do is you're just going to hold it and come up under the ball joint and then move it around a little bit just so that it's square. Tighten that up with your hand, and now what you're going to do is you're going to take a half-inch drive ratchet, a long one if you have it. If you don't, uh, use the standard one and put a little little pipe on it. 
um, <clears throat> you don't want to over crank it. And you're going to start pushing that up and you're just going to keep doing that until you feel it get extremely tight. Okay, now you're going to look up in there and make sure that it's seated all the way around. It is. Take the tool out. See, it doesn't take much to put these in with a tool. Uh, these Moog joints are very precisely made. Like I said, you do get what you pay for. So, once we've got that in there, take that out, take that out, take that out. There. Okay, now we've got a ball joint pressed in, and we're still going to take a look, now that the tool's out of the way, that we're flat up against everything, we don't have a gap, and it looks like we are square. So now we put our boot on it. Uh, <coughs> there's a new boot. You want to push that down on that and you want to make sure that this is holding on to the ball joint around here. Now if you want you can take a little bit of that oil off but it's not necessary. Once the spindle gets on here, it'll hold all that down. Okay, and that concludes the uh, ball joint pressing itself. Alright, um, these are relatively tight, so if you have a socket to fit over it, use a socket and then hit the socket down to get that boot. It needs to be fairly flush with the A-frame. In either case, now, putting the spindle back on, number one, you want the cotter, cotter pin <coughs> to be in a position where you can put it in relatively straight uh, without interfering with any of the... Uh... Hang on. Without interfering with the backing plate or anything else. So. You want to go front to rear, so you're going to move the ball joint pin, the center of the ball itself, to where it's facing front to rear. Okay? That way, when you put the cotter pin in, you got no big deal, no problems. Also, you want to move that ball joint, and now new ball joints are going to be very tight. Uh, a little bit out, so you can get over it, and we're going to put the spindle on the top one first because the top A-frame is loose. It's movable, you know. I mean, it's on rubber bushings, so it's a little bit of a push. But it'll be easier to do that. So we put the spindle on the top ball joint. And then we push up until we get over this. Okay. And as you can see, whoop, we're going to put the top bolt in for the, okay, all we're going to have to do is move that upper A-frame just a little bit. We're going to need to come and find the groove for it, so some kind of a pry bar just to mess around with that and there we go alright a lot of grease <laughs> uh, it's from greasing the ball joints now let me wipe that off so now that we have that installed we can go ahead and bounce around with the uh, lower ball joint which is now going to have to line up with the angle of the spindle. And we can see that we have to go in just a little bit until it drops down. There we go. There are the threads. 
just got to wiggle it around a little bit. Now you're going to take the castle nut and be careful when you tear the bag and all the shit doesn't go flying. Especially the Zerk fitting. They're kind of tiny. And by the way, the Zerk fittings are 8mm or 5 sixteenths. And what we're going to do is we're going to start our castle nut. Okay. And then we're just going to torque this down, release this, and do everything else in reverse order. So there it is. That's a ball joint, a lower ball joint installment on a uh, Lincoln. And I think this is up until 2000. 7 or 2005, even the new bodies uh, have the same thing, uh, and then they did away with the town car, so it doesn't matter. <coughs> the uh, Grand Marquis and Crown Vic are the same thing. And I am going to uh, replace the outer tie rod ends, and I'll do a separate video on how to replace one of these ends and put it back into very, very close alignment, even though at this point, doing both outer tie rod ends, uh, I just didn't like this. And I got it apart. It's very notchy. And they do like to eat these too. So, actually, they eat more outer tie rod ends than they do ball joints. So, um, I'll get to that in a different video. But this is it for doing a ball joint. And... Uh, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and uh, hit me up in the comments section. Alright, have a good day. I'll hopefully finish this now.